Now that the walls and roof are in place, let's generate the framing. Chief Architect supports both automatic and manual framing and can get you started quickly on your framing details. In the Building Framing dialog, each category allows you to define the framing options, including the dimensions, type, framing method, and other options. Some of the framing information is already embedded in the model, such as the wall thickness, headers for the openings, and floor platform depth. I'll begin with the floor framing. For the foundation, I'll mark Build Floor Framing for this plan, and you can see the floor structure is composed of a subfloor and an eye joist. These values are defined in the floor defaults, and you can override them as needed. I'll accept the remaining defaults that are common for residential construction. Any of these automatically generated joists can be manually adjusted. You can use a joist direction line to change the direction. In this case, as I create a joist direction line and rebuild the framing, you can see how it changes. If you want to manually frame the floor, I can use a floor truss tool for the middle portion. I'll draw the first truss and then use the multiple copy and then the Extend tool to complete all the floor trusses. As I move up to the floor above, you can see the floor framing that I've already created complete with structural beams. To create the wall framing, I'll turn on the Auto Build option. The framing will update as you make changes to the model. You will notice there are several framing settings you can control for connections, plates, and blocking. In the 3D view, I'll turn on the layers for the doors and windows. As I move a window, notice how the framing is automatically updating. On the garage doors, I'll change the header location to be at the top of the wall plate and combine the headers when the distance is within 24 inches. With automatic wall framing on, the framing quickly updates. For each wall, you can open a specific wall framing detail. In this view, you can add, change, or delete framing members. As I add an additional stud, the program will prompt to turn off the auto framing. For the header, there are several types you can define. In a wall framing detail view, you can add annotations and dimensions. If you need to show structural information for your plan, you can use tools like wall hatching to indicate the type of shear bracing that may be required. I can choose the wall hatching tool and click on the wall. Then I can create a legend and add any detail requirements in my construction documents. You can see in this example plan how the wall hatching was used for this shear wall layout page. The roofs can be stick or truss framed. Often, roof framing is completed with trusses using a third party that does the design and engineering. Stick framing can be a great way to visualize the framing for the roof. To build the stick framing, the roof thickness is defined from the roof we previously created. For the other framing components, you can change as needed. In 3D, you can now see a completed view of all the framing. Chief Architect includes a truss framing tool. Several styles of trusses can be defined. There is a king post, end truss, drop hip, energy heel, reduced gable, and attic trusses. There is also the option to set specific elements for truss spans and sizing. To truss frame the upper portion of the roof, I'll draw the first truss on the end of the wall, then a second truss, and multiple copy it 24 inches on center. I'll repeat a similar process for the center of the home 
and then as I fade to the completed plan, you can see all the trusses created. In the project browser, there is a truss schedule. You may find drawing just a few trusses is necessary for a cross-section detail in your construction documents. Chief Architect can help get the job done and can be used to verify the truss company's design.